If you've ever run into a hacker in League of Legends or Valorant, it's one of the worst feelings in the world. For League of Legends, it's a Yasuo that seems to dodge all of your skill shots, or it's a Zerath that hits all of their skill shots. For Valorant, it might be as simple as getting killed whenever you peek because they already know where you are. What if I told you that cheats are more common than you think? That there's an entire black market for cheats that you can go on right now and download ultimate power? Well, that's what I went to find out. I went onto the black market of cheats to interview hackers from Valorant and League of Legends to see what kind of cheats are available, how they're fighting against Riot's anti-cheat, and also I talked with some reverse software engineers about the technology behind Vanguard. Now, if you're interested, you can read my article in the description below as that will provide more technical info, but this video will also feature some information that I just couldn't fit in the article, such as my opinion. All right, let's get it. There are multiple different cheats in Valorant. Wall hacks, also referred to as ESP for instance, allow the cheater to see the health bars of players behind walls. You then have color or trigger bots. These cheats work by reading the pixel color in between your crosshairs, and if it matches the color the cheat is looking for, it will automatically click your mouse button. Funnily enough, this is also the hack that a professional player in Indonesia got caught with as his hack was written to register the color purple in between his crosshairs, and then he had to set the enemy player outline to be purple. This means that he could hold an angle such as in the crack of a door, and the bot would automatically fire his mouse button as soon as purple moved into his crosshairs. Now everybody gets shroud-like reflexes. I spoke with a Valorant cheat developer for a software called Unnamed, and they said they've had over 5,000 people use their cheat within two months. Their prices are about 550 US dollars for a lifetime membership and their weekly access tier is $30 a week. You do the math and even just at the weekly tier, they're making about $150,000 a month. Obviously, they accept this through cryptocurrency as making cheats is actually illegal. To talk about the legal aspect a little, Riot Games sued a League of Legends cheat developer known as League Sharp for $10 million in 2016. In 2023, Bungie sued a hacker for $500,000 for cheating in their game and was ordered by the judge that they cannot play Bungie titles ever. Talk about one hell of a permaban. Now to get even more insane with these cheats, let's talk about hardware cheats or direct memory access cheats. DMA cheats are cheats that run on separate hardware. One such piece is this. This is called a Arduino, and this specific model is called a Arduino Leonardo. You can purchase this for about 20 bucks. So the cheat is processed through this device and redirected back to your computer, and it disguises itself as a mouse driver. Pretty clever, right? Or how about the KM box? This device can be purchased for about $50 and allows you to plug in an entirely different computer along with your main PC. You then run the cheating software on that secondary PC, plug your mouse and keyboard into the box, and now your cheating software doesn't even have to touch your computer. It's all done remotely, essentially. Furthermore, according to one of my sources, Raspberry Pis are now being used as well that can be purchased for as little as $7. These are popular with things like like color bots that I mentioned previously. Kind of feels like Riot are the million dollar Russian tanks and cheats are the $300 drones, right? A Riot insider confirmed with me that the Arduino has already been banned, but with so many other options, now you see the battle that Riot finds themselves in. To crank things up a notch, you also have hackers using emerging AI technology to develop their cheats with such things as YOLO or you only look one once, image recognition code library, which is a real-time object detection model. And add to that more complexity to the cheat war, cheaters are also using advanced mathematical equations in their code called Bezier curves, which essentially put random movement as it locks onto the enemy's head. Who knew you'd be using a 
fucking polynomial later in life, right? <laughs> Fuck, that word gives me PTSD. Anyways, now that we've looked at Valorant, let's take a look at some other Riot titles such as League of Legends. Before we do that though, just want to say that now is a good time to subscribe. If you like this type of content, I do a lot of League of Legends content, documentaries, interviews, investigative documentaries like this, and much more. So make sure to subscribe as this helps me keep doing this kind of work. Thanks and back to the video. Scripts in League of Legends are pieces of software that enable automatic evading of enemy skill shots, a aimbot which almost always hits their skill shots, and summoner skill and ability tracking, which shows a little icon above their head with an exact readout of their cooldowns. Now obviously, it should be mentioned that the skill shots and evading can never be 100% accurate because there are mathematical situations where it's just impossible to land something, such as some Someone flashing to dodge your skill shot, or if you're the cheater, impossible to evade a skill shot because you're standing next to a wall. This is actually something to remember the next time you're ever facing a scripter. I spoke with one League of Legends cheat developer for a cheat called Vision that sells a private cheat for about $550 for a lifetime membership and would only take signups every two months since the news of Vanguard coming to League of Legends. The interesting thing is this cheat dev said their biggest market is Japan and Korea. That's most likely due to the competitive nature of those countries, as Korea has far more ranked players than almost every other region, and the Japanese are tryhards as well. Additionally, a Valorant cheat dev told me their biggest market was Asia as well. Now, you may be wondering why China is missing through all of this. Well, that's likely because they use an entirely different anti-cheat, but also, I'd imagine if your entire identity is controlled by Tencent via WeChat and multiple different software like that, and you have a social credit score along with a government that is notorious for spying, it's probably a stupid fucking idea to cheat in a video game and get thrown into jail for it. Now, as I was looking through all of these cheats, most of them operated through private Discord servers, and it wasn't uncommon for me to see 500 plus users in many of them. So there's a lot of cheating going on in both Valorant and League of Legends, despite what Riot may have you believe. Cheaters are most likely closet cheating as opposed to rage hacking. Closet cheaters refer to those that only turn their hacks on occasionally and use them only in clutch moments, whereas rage hackers blatantly cheat which are often found in FPS games where they'll just headshot you through walls and across the map. Also, I do have to mention that through all of this, a lot of hackers I spoke with had a lot of respect for the anti-cheat developer GamerDoc, saying that he's a good competition. Essentially, GamerDoc is a cheat hunter that works for Riot, who goes onto various forums and tries to obtain cheats. I had a lot of skeptical people from my inquiries because it sounded like I was GamerDoc in disguise. Additionally, many cheat developers I spoke with had massive fucking egos. Most were talking shit about other cheat developers and calling them pasters, a term that refers to developers that copy and paste code from other developers. And then there was other cheat developers that also wanted to know my sources of who I spoke with elsewhere. Just hilarious shit all around. And I I can see that the cheat development world is a very doggy dog place. So now that we've gone through all the hacks, let's talk about the people that have dissected Riot's code. Meet the reverse engineers. Reverse engineering is the process of looking at a piece of software's internal code by running a program in the background and having it read the code that your computer is processing. Engineers use a piece of software called a disassembler to do this, one such popular one being IDA to look at code statically while it's not currently running, and Cheat Engine, which looks at code while you're doing various actions within the game. I spoke with a guy named Zyrim who looked at Vanguard 
Vanguard's code and discovered a neat trick where Vanguard was essentially cloning itself and then whitelisting the clones inside your RAM so that only the clone could access the Vanguard's original section of memory. Really smart stuff. Now, as a quick explainer of how Vanguard works, it works in the kernel of your computer. Now, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you already kind of heard an explainer of the kernel and how it's the deepest section of your hard drive with access to everything. So I'm not going to go crazy with the explanation here, but just know that Vanguard does indeed have the highest access and loads along with your operating system. Now, here comes the controversial part. Is Vanguard snooping on you and is it basically a rootkit? The answer is most likely not, but then again, I can't say for sure. All the reverse engineers and hackers I talked to said it's unlikely, so that should at least give you some reassurance. But with that said, the US National Counterintelligence and Security Center raised awareness of China's disregard for data privacy with director William Evanina saying, Article 7 of China's National Intelligence Law states, Any organization or citizen shall support, assist, and cooperate with state intelligence work in accordance with the law and maintain the secrecy of all knowledge of state intelligence work. Article 28 of China's Cybersecurity Law states, Network operators shall provide technical support and assistance to public security organs and national security organs that are safeguarding national security and investigating criminal activities in accordance with the law. That essentially means that if the Chinese government requires a citizen to start snooping and gathering data from any data centers or whatnot, it is your obligation as a citizen to follow through with that work and give China the data. Then there's the caveat that Riot has been known in the past to be very petty and obsessed with power and control. From the shadow banning of content creators on the subreddit for League of Legends, including me by the way, to secretly registering registering the Valorant subreddit before the game released and handing it to the corrupt Reddit moderators that run the League of Legends subreddit, to running psychological experiments on their League of Legends player base back in the days of Riot Light. Riot have done a lot of fucked up shit, like don't get me wrong, so I could totally see why someone would have pause for concern over Vanguard. By the way, I'll link all the evidence for that stuff in the description below, as I've done several articles on these topics. Topics. Along with that, another kernel anti-cheat, ESEA, which does anti-cheat for Counter-Strike 2, and essentially, they're like face it, installed a Bitcoin miner in their players' computers and were then fined $1 million by the US courts. So while all that is ruminating in the background, I think what is more likely is an exploit discovered in Vanguard that exposes several player computers to malware. To quote a reverse first engineer I spoke with, they said, It doesn't happen often, but it does pose a risk. I covered an exploit a few years back in Easy Anti-Cheat where I could virtually inject anything into the game and hide it from the system by virtue of the anti-cheat's protection. This obviously means that someone could have injected malicious code to Easy Anti-Cheat's kernel-level anti-cheat, almost the same thing as Vanguard, and a player would never know. But the short answer to all of this is no, I don't think that Riot are spying on you or give a shit that you jack off to Pokimane AI generated porn. Wait, was that too specific? Now onto the actual problem with Vanguard, which is the use of the trusted platform module or TPM. Now, the TPM is a piece of hardware in all computers produced after about 2016. This either exists on your motherboard or inside your processor. TPM is supposed to be a cryptographic key that is impossible to crack, and its job is to verify and sign things such as hardware, drivers, and SSL website certificates. This hardware has been pushed by a computer group called the Trusted Computer Group. Yeah, I know, the Trusted Computer Group. Like, nobody could be evil in that group, right? Now, the wild thing is that it's comprised of a lot of big tech companies. 
over 80 of them in fact from intel to nvidia amd canon qualcomm hp dell google huawei alibaba microsoft cisco ibm the list just goes on and on and on the reason tpm is a critical component for vanguard is because it ensures that all drivers are signed and not tampered with this allows vanguard to use the tpm model to keep track of each driver and this is made easier since Windows 11 requires TPM enabled. Technically, you could run Windows 11 without TPM, but you won't receive any updates or support. Then, if you have a driver that's been tampered with, Riot will immediately know and be able to hardware ban your computer components, such as your hard drive or your CPU or your motherboard or your router. One reverse engineer I talked to said that a similar anti-cheat called Easy Anti-Cheat, which creates anti-cheats for games like Fortnite, Apex Legends, Rainbow Six, etc, etc, a lot of different games, said that Easy Anti-Cheat keeps track of probably 30 different pieces of hardware on your computer. So TPM is impossible to forge or duplicate, and Vanguard forces all computers on Windows 11 to have this. Along with that, although they currently allow users to use Windows 10, they are also starting to force people to enable TPM on those systems as well. Now, the reason why you should really give a fuck about all of this is because there are other companies that have already started to abuse the use of TPM. From Apple, which bricked iPhones for installing third-party hardware like the home button, to HP, which blocks third-party ink cartridges, which they're currently being sued for, and then John Deere that makes proprietary diagnostic tools and locks the computer systems of their tractors. All of this is now being controlled by TPM, an impossible black box to crack due to cryptography keys, and until quantum computing comes, we won't be able to crack it. Although there are some cool black hatters that have cracked a Tesla TPM, unlocking paid features like heated seats and faster acceleration, but that was through introducing electric voltage shocks to disrupt the computer system. My final thoughts on this is that I think a lot of the technology behind Riot Vanguard system is really smart and they're simply using the latest tools available to them with things like TPM. With that said, this whole thing is bigger than just banning a couple cheaters, and this technology could truly be used for evil things, not necessarily from Riot, and not saying I fully put it past them either, but from bigger companies, and Riot is the leading example for everybody to look at to see how powerful it is. Anyways, thanks for watching, remember to subscribe, and go read my my article in the description below if you want more technical information and quotes from the hackers and reverse engineers I spoke with. Peace out.